That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day if you're in the mood. Happy Valentine's Day, Notre Dame people. You in the mood? Let's talk about it. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Now, I'm going to try and do this calmly. It's 9 a.m. This isn't 9 p.m. on a Friday night, four Miller Lights deep. We're going to try and do this calmly, but I'm not very happy. Let's get into this. Hi to everybody. I see the chats. It's going. This isn't going to be a normal situation because I'm all worked up. All right. So let's try and do this calmly. Welcome in. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Don't take it out on your wife and girlfriend. Notre Dame's a bunch of cheapskates. They don't deserve it. Take them out to eat. Don't cheap out on them. Don't cheap out on them tonight. Happy Valentine's Day. If you value something, treat it right. Do what it takes to cultivate that relationship. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet or you're not scared away yet. It's up to you. I don't care. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Okay? Hit thumbs up. That helps me as well. Notifications on. That way you can be alerted every time Swarbrick won't open his wallet. Twitter, always Irish, rat, always Irish, eight. emails, always Irish, <laughs> always Irish, nd at gmail.com, call in line, 312-988-15, tell Johnny all you've heard and seen about how you got to pay $200 for a shirt with an ND on it, but Notre Dame can't get an assistant coach from Utah. Fighting Irish Wire, tune in. Articles every day, good articles, a lot of articles. It's beautiful, tune in. All right, let's get into this. First things first, number uno, one. Let's keep in mind what happened in Michigan State last night. And I was thinking about that, going to bed. I was all mad about what we have to talk about. There are more important things in life, and we all know that. We all understand that. Today's a time for that perspective, and I'm trying, even though it's very, it's very hard given my dynamic with all this. And <clears throat> so I want to make sure we all understand when we're going to get mad about the football, which is going to happen in one minute to understand there are bigger things in life going on, uh, most notably being able to go to college and not get killed. So let's keep that in mind. And I wanted to make sure we get that out. Also, <laughs> I do really mean it. Happy Valentine's Day. Like, go have fun, whatever. Like, I'm going to be in a bad mood, but don't let it affect you. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So first things first. What happened to Michigan State? Unfortunately, there was a shooting and multiple people died on campus late last night. All right. So first things first. Harry, congratulations, I guess. 38-year career, all the NFL names, all the skins on the wall. Congratulations. Now, what's interesting about this is the timing. Do you think Harry came back under one year for one year? I'm seeing all sorts of stuff that's saying that that uh, the Utah offense coordinator, Ludwig, wanted his offensive, uh, his offensive line guy. That's interesting. That's very interesting. And it would be another misstep if it's true that you kind of pushed Harry out the door, either actually or kind of by setting it up that you were anticipating getting Ludwig and letting him do what he wanted to do at offensive line. Is that not the case? I, I read, I've seen different things. You know how it is with all the rumors and all that. So is that a part of this? Because that's another misstep. If you pushed Harry out the door before you even knew you had the other stuff set up. If that's true, it's a misstep. Another one. Because I'm seeing people say, 
that's weird to me. Harry, he didn't like Kelly, left. Kelly was gone. He comes back only one year. That's weird. And then when I hear that Ludwig, it might have been his offensive line guy, and then you push Harry out, and then they realize they're not going to pay the buyout, and it's a double loss, it's a bad luck. So let's let's go over this. Last night it comes out. You, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a video pre-prepared announcing Ludwig. I had an article pre-prepared on Irish Wire announcing Ludwig. I was under the understanding they didn't want to get O'Leary, so they were taking some time to verify everything. You know how long Notre Dame takes to do things. I was expecting that announcement. I was going to be happy with it. And I was going to say it was a very solid hire. Last night, I think it was Pete Thamel. It comes out. Ludwig staying at Utah due to Notre Dame not willing to pay the buyout. And I believe it's what? 2.8 million? 2.8 is the buyout. Okay. Now, let's get into what is what, what are your reactions to this? Here's number one. I found some good news, Notre Dame fans. I found some number one good news. I always say Notre Dame fans never agree on anything. Correction. I stand corrected. We agree now. Everybody doesn't like this. Everybody's embarrassed by this. Everybody's humiliated by this. Finally, I ask for it all the time. I said, what would it take for Notre Dame fans to all be on the same page? Well, ding, ding. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We finally found it. You thought losing Reese to Bama was a bad look? Huh? You? (laughs) Oh, my God. People were telling me, John, this is so embarrassing that Notre Dame lost Reese to Alabama. If you thought losing Reese to Alabama was a bad look, how does this one come off? You guys, this is why nobody takes Notre Dame seriously nationally as an elite contender. Things like this is why that perception exists. This is why Notre Dame gets laughed at as not being serious about winning. This is is why it's a premier example of why we do not get that respect and get looked at that way. All right? This is an example of that. The Notre Dame brass is talk and no action. And you know who the dumb ones are? This hurts me. We're the dumb ones. We're the dumb ones. Think about it. We're the idiots. We are the idiots. We are the ones. I am that idiot spending $168 for a Notre Dame polo at the bookstore to look good on this show like it's going to change my face. You're the ones selling your baby's body parts they don't need to afford a parking pass for one of these stupid games. You're the ones whose seats doubled in price because they do the Crossroads Project. You're the ones who pay more for your season ticket package every single year. You're the ones paying outrageous hotel prices to stay in beautiful South Bend for a weekend to watch a game. All of that that we do in good faith because it's worth it and we value it and we love it. All of that. We're the losers. We're the dumb ones. What is all of this for if we're going to end up in this position? What is all this for? Why do you care so much? Why do I care so much? Why are we on this show? Why do I have this program? It's pointless if the administration isn't putting the football program in the best position to succeed. What is all of this for? This feels like my love with the White Sox feels. I give everything. I don't miss a game. 162 games a year, I'm watching that dumb baseball team living and dying on every pitch, 
love everything about it, and they refuse to pay to put the best team on the field every single year. And you're capped at how good you could be. And it hurts when you give your all as a fan and you don't feel like you're getting it back from the team. All talk, no action. They talk about being top of the line. They talk about title standards. They talk about all of that. They nickel and dime anybody who likes Notre Dame to death in every single way. And you got this new coach trying to build a program and you can't buy out an assistant coach from Utah. You got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. This is a, um, here's the other thing. Stuff like this has trickle down effects. Here's one of them. To me, this is a personal insult slap to the face to Marcus Freeman. This guy is running himself ragged all over the country trying to make this program elite again. And, and you're not helping them. You can't claim you're serious about being an elite program when you're not willing to do what it takes. Notre Dame's, the administration, the brass, whoever writes these checks for whatever it is, they don't value what we value. They don't value what we value, and it's so offensive. They value perception, how they're looked at. They value what it looks like academically. They value the moral superiority thing. They value all of that. And they're taking for granted the reason any of it matters. The only reason anybody cares about anything else that's happened or is happening at Notre Dame is because of the success of the football program. All these nerds I know that love their Notre Dame degrees and this and that. Never all oh, football's just for me, dads, but I'm a lawyer, whatever. All of those degrees wouldn't mean near as much if it wasn't for early success in football. To not have the respect and dignity to continue that is it's offensive. It's a personal insult to you, to me, to Freeman, to my dead grandpa. Frank Leahy rolling over in his grave. (sighs) The biggest problem with this is it's a personal insult to Marcus Freeman. And I, maybe he is a lot more mature than I am, but this, this, this lasts, this sets a tone and it ain't a good one. It, It does. It sets a precedent and a tone and it ain't a good one. I, I'm, it's a bad look. This is a really, really cheap, bad look. And it just, there's only one mes- message this gives. There's no nuance. There's no nothing to the nation of everybody that follows and cares about college football. This one decision gives one message and only one message. Notre Dame's not serious about being elite, period. Period. That is it. There's only one message that comes out of this. And it is Notre Dame is not serious about being an elite contender. They're not willing to do what it takes. There is a difference between not wanting to, you know, go overboard with NIL and and cut all the uh, academic restrictions to get guys in. Those are Notre Dame values that I can like reasonably accept as basic tenets of Notre Dame and don't have anything against and want them to hold some of those thresholds at a higher standard than like a typical football factory. Like those are values that I I do understand why Notre Dame holds and it makes sense. Something like this. There's no way. Listen. There's no way that Notre Dame doesn't have the money. There's no way 
all that place does is print money. I don't care if you tell me that's not what it goes to. It goes to the science department or whatever. The place prints money. They could do it. They're unwilling to do it. And I just feel bad for Freeman. I feel horrible for Freeman. He's running all over the country, recruiting, doing all he can within the framework he's given to work in. And you're not willing to help him and buy out an assistant from Utah. That's, that's what we're doing. And they're going to sell that as what? What are you going to sell that as? You want a polo with the Notre Dame on it? That'll cost you two mortgage payments. A parking pass for a game? You better start in OnlyFans and you better be hot because you're going to need it to get that parking pass. I didn't even mention the tickets. New multi-million dollar buildings going up every day, but you won't buy out a Utah assistant. There's only one message, and it is we are not serious about winning. It is all talk. All talk. Look at this. My brother down in Florida. I'm not trying to get you worked up. You already knew how this was going to go. You grew up with me. None of this should be a surprise to you. Had to get up from my desk and go for a walk. Stressing me out this morning. Andrew, I don't mean to do that to you. Um, it Listen, people aren't dumb. Actions speak louder than words. People, Notre Dame fans are not dumb. I, we may be willing to spend money for a product that doesn't want to spend it in return to the level it takes, but we're not dumb. Actions speak louder than words. This is small time. This is small time stuff, you guys. I mean, this is like middle of the road program legitimately doesn't have the means to hire the, the top assistants. I, this is low rate and it's embarrassing. And we are the losers for caring as much as we do and not getting it back. And Freeman's a big loser in this. I feel horrible for that guy. I feel absolutely horrible for Marcus Freeman. The guy is trying all he can, but he's not getting the support he needs to get this off the ground the right way. It's, it's just so offensive and hurtful as much as we all care. And it just comes down to this. It, it just, this is missing the big picture on so many levels. Like, practically what it means because I thought this guy was the best fit of what's available. And I really liked what he had and all of his history. I thought it was the best fit. Practically that's an issue. Now you ran a Harry off. So now that's an issue on top of this issue. When you thought you might get Ludwig, he might bring his guy. And then Harry's at now, now you're in a double issue. Now you're in a double issue with no easy way out. And it, so practically, Practically, that's the issue was Ludwig was the, the very best fit for this and whatever. And now you have an offensive line situation. That's the practicality of this. And who you go to now, I don't know. But perceptually, this is a big problem too in a couple of ways. You have the practical part of who the hell are you going to hire and who's the offensive line coach. That's the practical part. Perceptually, here's the issue. There's two of them. Number one is whoever, whoever gets the job now, you already know they're the second or third choice. That's not a damn good start. That's not a good start. Whoever they end up hiring, we're all going to know, was it the first choice? Right away, that sets a bad tone in everybody's mind. It just sets a bad tone because you know for a fact it wasn't the number one choice. Maybe not even the number two choice if you believe some of the articles and what I've been told. So that's a uh, perceptual issue number one. Perceptual issue number two is the bigger picture one we're talking about. The unquestionable documented proof that the administration's not willing to do what it takes to put the program in the best position to become elite. That's not an opinion. It's a fact. You just saw it happen. 
You just saw it happen. So, like, the other thing I don't know is, the other thing I don't know is, Jack, come on, Jack. Like, work with me here. You're about on your way out. You're about to retire. You've done some good things. People gave you credit for hiring Freeman and like that. This dude's on his way out. What? 2.8 million, Jack? Seriously? What are you sitting there crunching the numbers? Huh? I'm doing the numbers here. 80 million for a new science building? No problem. 2 million to make football good? Can't go there. You're an idiot. I don't think these people understand the priorities here. MJH Irish, what do you want me to do? Be happy? Crying Irish? What the hell do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Tell me. Call in. Call in. MGH Irish, whatever. Give me a call. 312-988-15. Tell me how you want me to react. Come on. Call me. Dial it up. What's your number? I see you. What's your number? Call it in. Let's talk about it. Tell me how I'm supposed to feel. Tell me how I'm supposed to handle it. Call in, tough guy. Call in. 312-988-15. Call me. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me what part of this I'm wrong with. Call it up. I'm waiting. I don't hear the phone ringing. Call it up. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me. I'm open to it. Correct me. Tell me that I'm wrong. Do it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I don't see any calls. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. All right. So I am sufficiently upset. I'm going to, I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know what you want me to do. Like I run a show reacting to the Notre Dame news. Really negative Notre Dame news happened. And now I got people in here surprised I'm upset about it. What do you want me to say? My entire life is built around this brand that loves Notre Dame. And you're telling me not to care that the administration doesn't care about putting us in a position to be good. You got the wrong show, dog. There's there's a dozen other Notre Dame shows that are going to pussyfoot around this and talk about this all gentle. You got the wrong show. You got the wrong show. I was so mad I even forgot to put my headphones on. It's going to be hard to take calls without that. But seriously, anybody who's in here who's like, I can't believe John's reacting this way. What are you, new? Unbelievable. Let's see what you guys think. Give me a call. Pat, you're up first. <laughs> oh, good timing, John. I just I just started listening. I figured you'd be live after we were texting. What do you make of this, Pat? It's a bad look. It's a very bad look all around. Bad, bad, a bad look. It's a catastrophe. Yep. You're the laughing stock of college football. The freaking laughing stock of college football. And for for two point eight million dollars, ah, it's so bad. It's so bad. And this timing with Harry. At first, I thought it was Harry just saying. You know, I came back. I liked Tommy. I knew Tommy was going to do. Tommy left. I got nothing left to prove. I'm going to go retire. But then when it comes out that the offensive co- or the offensive line coach from Utah was supposed to come with, and Harry retires a day before all of this is coming out, it makes me question, was Harry pushed out? Yeah, the, the timing on that is very peculiar. And it made you wonder about the new offensive coordinator situation. But then I figured since one wasn't hired, it really wasn't fair for me to go there yet. But if they got that part cart before the horse and messed up the big part, we're in a bad spot. This is a bad move. It's a you big, know, it's, it's a bad you know spot. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, we have, we, we're, no, I, I have no idea what actually happened. It's just the way all this is falling. I, Harry could have, Harry could have retired at any point. After after the season, if he wasn't planning on retiring, and so it felt it felt like Tommy. But this is just bizarre because Tommy was gone for like a week before Harry announces. Yeah. Okay. Timeout. Timeout. 
MJH Irish 84. Nobody even heard of Andy Ludwig until last week. That's not the point. You're missing the entire point. It doesn't matter the name. It matters that it's the guy Freeman wanted and you weren't willing to do what it takes. The name doesn't matter. It's the point of the whole thing, not the name. Go ahead, Pat. Well, and, and to go back, when we were doing our, our, our Tommy Reese show together, um, I said, that's the guy. I said the Utah offensive coordinator is the guy they should hire. So it's not it's 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 disingenuous to say that nobody's heard of him. People who follow have heard of him. But now let people me ask you this, Pat. People. Let me let me ask you this. What how is there a scenario where they took the guy out for a date to the hockey game and did all that and did all this wooing and didn't know the buyout? Shouldn't you have known that right away before the guy even comes here and then I go, think, oh, 2.8? Notre Dame can't come up with you know, that. Do, Open up, flip up a couch a- cushion <laughs> in the library. There will be 2.8 million. What are we doing all this for, Pat? What are we doing all this for? Why care this much if you're not going to get it back? I do think there's a possibility that an offer was made and then Utah came back and said, well, wait a second, you owe us 2.8 million. And Notre Dame might've been like, Whoa, we didn't know about this. And instead of, instead of handling it in a business manner, they just rejected it out of hand because they thought they were sleight of hand. But the look of this, there's no, you oh, don't, no. you it's can't, what, 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 whatever the details are behind the scene, the, the, the message this sends to the college football world is one that oh, is yeah. a big black eye for all of Notre Dame. It's just, oh, yeah. it's a flashing oh, yeah. sign that it, says not big time, <laughs> not serious, not real, and, don't care, not interested in even trying to get to the next level is the message. You know what you, you know what you, you know what they did? Like you're talking about how you feel bad for market. It's, it's not even I feel bad for Marcus. It's you just cut the legs out from under the guy. Yep. You have, for the last year and a half, been going out of your way, you know, putting coaches on private planes for the recruiting site. I mean, they, they, they spent a ton of money. They've opened up a huge budget to, to accommodate Marcus. But then they just, and so he's sitting there thinking, I don't know why, why the last guy was, was complaining about everything because they're, they're doing everything I ask. But then, boom, he just walked right into that same old BS Notre Dame wall of we're not gonna we're not gonna go that route because that's not how we do it, you know. And and that's just all it comes down to. And Pat, just, somebody just put just, in the chat. It's just the old tiny Notre Dame thing that we've been running against for years. Somebody put in the chat, John. A high school recruits are getting paid more than two point eight million, and there's no guarantee they're even gonna show up or be good. <laughs> like. When money is all, money is all just, it's just kind of like this ambiguous thing now, like money and the value of it. And I was thinking about it last night too. You got a high school players that may not even end up playing a snap and they're getting $3 million checks. Marcus Freeman's got this program on the precipice of being really competitive again, needs a really good offense coordinator to grow with. And it's like, nope, too much for Notre Dame. I can't handle it, Pat. Yeah. That under and seventy-eight dollar uh, polo, I can't handle it. Like I know right. you can't say, John, that polo that's way overpriced with that ND. That money doesn't go right to football, but it's just the idea of all of this in totality <laughs> that it, it comes down to this. To do I can't handle it. That has, yeah, that has. That just because, yeah, that has nothing to do with it. It's, Fine, yeah, the money, even the NBC contract money, it doesn't go to the football program. It goes to the You know what, then? What money does? What money does? The whole place has been built on football success. When does it get money? Why does it just have to fund everything else? But that's right. That's not the point. The point isn't the two points. They can make, Jack Swalbert can make four phone phone calls. And have two point eight million dollars in donations in an hour. But, but what then? Why not? Why hamstring your new coach? Why, Pat? Why? But why? It's, why? It's, I want to know why. It's the same stuff we've been dealing with since we remember, John. I can't answer it. They, 
this is the this is the highbrow. This is where they think they're 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 better than everyone else. They're they're uh, showing a. But if you're uh, better than I'm, wait to me, unreasonable to me, better than everybody else means we're willing to pay whatever it takes because we're better than everybody else, and money's not an issue like it would be some places. That's what better than everybody no. else means to me. Not I, cheap and out. I, I would agree. Go for it. I would agree. I would totally. Okay, so now who do they hire, Pat? Now you're down to option what? Two or three? Well, Where do you the, go yeah, now? So, so now what? Well, so so remember they offered Klein, he rejected. So they already got embarrassed once. Now they offered Ludwig, and then they rescind the offer because they don't want to pay his buyout. So now they just now, now you can't even go back to Ludwig now and say, hey, we're going to pay the buyout. You want to come now? Because they just said, they just said no, you're not worth it. So they can't even they can't even reverse action on this because this guy would be like the hell with you guys I don't know I don't trust Notre Dame now, and now you got to go get I don't even know who who they would want to get, who would want this who would who would really want this after watching this you get rejected by your first guy your second guy you have to rescind the offer because you don't want to pay the buyout now the third guy is going to be Byron Leftwich or somebody who who just has no business being the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame and then Darren, this goes back to the argument of um, the 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 missing the ex girlfriend. It's not whether or not your ex girlfriend is super hot. It's how does she actually compare to the guy you had before? How does she compare to the guy you had before? And and well, how does he compare? How does this offensive coordinator compare to the guy you had before? And you had a prospect in Tommy who left for Alabama. We agreed that was a good move for him. And then you had a chancellor. I don't like the Klein move. Then you had Ludwig, and you pull out. You are just shooting yourself in the foot, and you're going to put your, you're going to take your head coach from a position where he could have been successful and had something that advanced his program, probably an improvement over Tommy Reese, and you're going to set this offense back three years. How would you feel if you're Marcus? How should he be processing this? That's that's a part of this I've really oh, been thinking about all night. Is how mad I'd be. It, knowing I'm doing all I can and running around the country like he is only to have something like this happen when you identify uh, your guy. How should you feel if you're Marcus other than, hey, Ryan, when are you leaving Ohio State? Put in a good word for me. Like, I'm just saying, yeah. how should Marcus feel? It's kind of. You're not getting the support kind of you need. You're not getting the support. You need yeah. to do your job well. So, you know what, Ryan Day, you're going to the NFL or something. I hope they call Freeman up. I, I I mean, whatever. If you're not getting the support where you're working, you look for something else. Yeah, I I, I agree. I don't think I don't think it's going to be that drastic that quick. But I'm not you, saying you I'm not saying immediate. Back by your own I'm not saying immediate or anything like resign right now. I am saying if I no. was in his position, this is getting it's something I'm going to carry around with me that bothers me. I'm just telling you, it's a weight yeah. I would carry. And it's it's something oh, in the absolutely. back of my mind of where I'm at in this dynamic and getting the support I want. Like it, it that's absolutely. not a great vibe either, man. No, no, I agree. I agree. It's 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 embarrassing. So what do you it's hire, Gerard? You hire the tight end guy now and you just promote from within. No one's excited. Everybody knows it was the cheap option, and then we're already off on that foot. Is that the move? How big time? Real big time. I, I don't know who, who's big time now. Like, what if they're not willing to pay two point eight million dollars from the the offensive corner from Utah? What who do they they're they gonna they were gonna offer Tommy two million? I guarantee they ain't gonna offer anyone else two million, especially now that they're moving down their list. So you ain't getting there's no big time. I uh, I'm not very happy, Pat. It's just. <laughs> Have you gathered that? Hey, happy happy Valentine's Day, though. If you're in the mood for nude, happy Valentine's Day, yeah. Pat. You and I, you and I were supposed to talk until next week, right? <laughs> yeah, look how that works. When I saw that, I thought I figured you're gonna go live this morning. I wanted to call it. Uh, I gotta go though. I'm gonna go play golf. All so. right, go relax, have a couple drinks in Arizona, have fun. Later. All right, later, brother. See you. Bye. Seven oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm trying to calm down. 999-V1 Rotate for the phone lines. Can't stay long. Go Irish. We'll be back in South Bend soon. V1 Rotate, V2. Nothing gets him down. $10 holler. Appreciate it. All right. Here we go again. I'm all about logic with this stuff. And I know this guy's trying to troll me. And he's here a lot, which I appreciate. MJH Irish, you're here a lot. And I appreciate you 
because I recognize you, you're here a lot. I don't care about the op optics, neither do recruits. Here's what, where we're going to fall here. I do care about those national optics and how Notre Dame's perceived. You could say the recruits don't, that's fine. But the issue is it isn't just optics. This is very practical. Like there's no way to make this not bad. There's the perceptual part nationally. And if you don't buy into that, you don't have to. Practically, this guy was identified as the number one best fit for this job for a lot of reasons, and we screwed it up. Practically, that has impact. You might not care about the optics, nor do our recruits. You're saying, do you care how good we are on Saturdays next year? If the answer is yes, then you're not allowed to sit back and act like this isn't a problem or wasn't a misstep. So either way you want to go, there's no, there's no side of this that makes Notre Dame look good and it's not a bad look that hurts the program. There isn't. No way. So I'm struggling with this. Uh, 859, you're on the line. Good morning. Hi, John. How are you? Frustrated. Oh, you're open. You're dead on. You're 100% nailed it. Am I and going? Wait, wait, am I going office, overboard? Am I going overboard with? Oh God, no! You're not going enough. You're not going enough. To be honest with you, if you're a true Notre Dame fan, and I mean a diehard fan, you should be just looking in the mirror, going, "We're an embarrassment. We are a fucking laughing stock across the country." You, I mean, I, what more? On by the way, if they they didn't want to uh, betting. Why didn't they? You tell me they didn't know he had a buyout contract when they did all the background checks. Yeah, come they, on. That's my Notre question. Dame is the number one business school in the country. Right. That that's another problem I have is that should have been one of the first things discussed and know exactly what that number is to even get any further. That should have been a part of it. So I don't understand the timing on that either. And if I'm Freeman. You're putting this in the back of your mind saying, I'm getting the hell out of here as soon as I can. See, I'm trying, Tim, I'm trying to not get that. I'm trying to not go all the way down that path. But when I'm putting myself in Freeman's spot and I see how much genuine effort and work he's putting into this, I don't know how as a human, you cannot take this as a personal slap in the face. I, I don't know any exactly. other way to take it. How could you be Marcus and yeah. not feel like, dude, I'm giving everything I have every day, doing all this recruiting, trying to make it work here. Give me what I need and to just be told, no, we, we could. We just, we're just not going to. I, that really kind of rubs stuff, me the wrong way, dude. It's also what the schools become. When we went there and lost, you were in a bad mood for a week. You didn't, you, no, nobody wanted to be around us. Now the students are off. We lose. It's okay. It's not a big deal. That's why. That's why yeah. they are never going to win again. The 88's their last title. There was a part of the administration that wished football would just go the hell away because they view it's an embarrassment yep. and they want to be the Ivy League. Yep. You know what? Look it's at true. the pathetic basketball yeah. program you have. You want to be in Ivy League? Then shut the damn programs down and see where your bank accounts go. Yeah, and here's the other thing, Tia. You're not going to like this because you and I have you and I keep in contact often. Somebody put in my chat, BK's vindicated and it's physically repulsing. And I think what they mean with that is one of Kelly's big complaints was he wanted stuff done at Notre Dame that they weren't willing to pony up and do or do quick enough for his liking. This lines right up with that in that regard. Uh, you could make that argument that maybe this is one of the things BK was unhappy about that made him leave. And now we're seeing it with the new guy. I, as much as I have my issues with BK, that may be a point. May be a point. You could make the point, but let's cut. Let's be, let's use some intelligence here. Why didn't BK take us to the next level and win big? Because the son of a bitch was a lazy MF. And he wouldn't do the work and put the time in to get it done. Plain and simple. Yep, that's my opinion too. Um, now let me ask you this. What do you think happened with Harry? Do you think this was linked to Ludwig bringing in his own OC and then Harry knew about it or whatever and was like, all right, I'll bow out. And now we're in that position. Uh, it wouldn't shock me. The optic, like you said, the optics or how it lined up doesn't look real good. Like your previous caller said, he, he, he'd known this about this for two weeks. And why? And that's the other question I didn't go. I think I would, he may even text you that. What is his love affair with Tommy Reese? 
uh, Harry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I thought you made a good point about Harry. Yeah, I can't argue. Great, he had a lot of success. He had a lot of guys he put in the pros. But when we needed him to man up in the biggest games, UFC, the bowl games, that mattered. Where was our offensive line? Nowhere to be found. Yep. Yep. It, it was an issue. Um, and then people are saying, why did Lou Holtz leave? Ask yourself. I mean, I, I'm sure. <sighs> you know why? Because, you know, about, well, you probably are too young. He, 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 he was protected because he and the AD, probably, I think White or either White or Bochab came in after, after the one that was the president of the bank. He left and the AD was trying to force Holtz out. They, Holtz was used to running his own show, and he, he didn't get along with the new man. I think yeah. it was Kevin White. I think that's what I think that's what was. Man, no, they wanted what they do. He emphasized it because Notre Dame has done this all day back with Rockney or not Rockney Leahy, and uh, he used to butt heads with Hesburgh because Hesburgh did not want to become a football factory. Yep. he wanted it a little bit because he could build off of it, but there was always a clash. They would let the football program build up, and when it went on its glory run for six or seven years, oh, then we're going to start pulling in the string. Yep. Yep, and you're right. It's the, same, it's the same principle. It's a historic it's fact. That we are now. I it, it that is a historic fact. So let me ask you this: Where do you go now? Where do you look now on your maybe your third choice? I have if, no idea. If, I, hell, at this point, just save face, promote within, and stay the hell with it. Uh, I mean, are you going to really? Where are you going to go outside? There's no like the, there's no big name out there that you're going to be willing to pay. I mean, yeah. they, I bet you they could have gotten away if he was making eight hundred thousand dollars at Utah. They probably could say, all right, we'll bump you to one point two, one point three, boom. And the buyout, come on, you're telling me there isn't a hundred rich alumni that would have written those checks to cover that? Give yep. me a break. Yep. It's, it's, I know there's money. I know there's money. You know there's money. Everybody knows their money. This is not a matter of can't, it's a matter of not willing to. And I just don't understand. Like on a fundamental level, that's what it comes down to. I know they have the money. Anybody who's been on campus knows they have the money. They just do. They're not willing to do it. And I don't understand why. I, I don't. And But really, Tim, here's the problem. I don't like being lied to. And Notre Dame constantly lies to you, the fan, saying we value yep. championships, championship effort, champion, that's no, the goal, blah, 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 blah. Those are words, but actions are what matters. And when it comes down to it, what did they do? They didn't put the position in the best, this program in the best position because of a couple million dollars, this is Notre Dame. They have urinals worth two point eight million. Come on, you're you, you're a, you're a hundred percent right. It's the thing, but it comes back down to the whole thing. There is a fraction of people that have enough power in that place to say we don't want football to be big. We want it to go away. The only way you hit Notre Dame, although I thought it would happen when they hit, because the only other time I remember big riff with the contributors is when they had Obama give the graduation uh, speech. And that really put a lot of alumni off. The only way you're going to get Notre Dame to react or, or go and try to do something different is if all a lot of big donors and a lot of all their other donors say, you know what, we're not giving anymore. Yeah. Cut them off, cut them off, cut, cut them off. And maybe that wakes them up, but I doubt it. Yeah, it I won't really happen. Do. I mean, now, the, the last time I looked outside of Texas, I think we're the it's all-time endowments. We're like 10th in the country. Oh, but but, but every school. time that co- every time I that comes up, uh, John, I've been crunching the numbers and uh, I I have learned that none of that dollars goes for the football program. That money is allocated to uh, buying new library books. Every time I bring up how much money we have, some nerd tells me there isn't a couple million to put into the only reason anyone cares about the school at all. Well, I'd like to also know, you know how they said uh, the NBC money was for helping for minority scholarships? No, it's not. That's another lie, too. I am just struggling that Marcus Freeman's giving everything he has, trying every everything he could do to get this, this program in the right position. To be stonewalled by your own people is the worst part of this. It doesn't surprise me in the 11th hour, people try and steal our recruits and all that. It's I get it. I don't mind any of that. That's the nature of all this. But when you're you got opponents that are in your own building, it's it's a hard fight to win when you have somebody against you on your own side. Nope, you you're 100 percent correct. And I don't. I, I think the sad thing is, is just you throw your hands up and say, "We're never going to be great again." It's just it's so and man, I, it's I, so I, I disheartening don't... though because everybody here in this chat, everybody calling, 
We love Notre Dame not by choice. We love Notre Dame because it's who we are and it's who our families have been. And we just take pride yep. in it being respected around the country. That's a big badge of honor and pride we all wear. And it's just really quite offensive to, to all of us. It, it just is. There's nothing anyone's going to tell me today that's not going to make me feel this way. There's no rationale. There's no reason other than wanting to be cheap. I don't, I don't see a practical reason for this that I would accept. They'll probably try to spin it some way, but you're 100 percent correct. There ain't no spin in this. They're they're just it's a bad look. It's a oh, bad you look. Know Notre Dame's gonna try. It's a bad They'll look. They'll try somehow. I uh oh. They'll try. They will. Now I don't know how they're gonna do it, but they will try to spin this. Yes, they will. I don't know, man. But, it, it's you know, rough. Um, but hey man, enjoy your Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, you too. And love the show. Keep up the good work. Have a good one, man. I'll talk to you later. See ya. Oh, man. Five, six, two. We're talking to you. What's going on? Oh, man. I do a am, whole lot. Am I? I uh, listen, I first things first. Little. Am I overreacting? Uh, no, because uh, when I saw this um, uh, update, I was ironically um, with my softball league, and I just felt like grabbing my bat and slamming it to the ground multiple times in anger. You know what it felt like, man? This. Let me tell you this and see if you could relate. You know what it felt like when I was reading this on Twitter last night when it broke? I felt like a pit what? in my stomach, man. It, it, it Like that, that uncomfortable, like deep personal pain in your stomach when somebody like wrongs you and you weren't expecting it or something like it yeah. feels like you were like kind of betrayed by your own in some way and i know that's an overreaction but that's how i felt is like dude this, our own people aren't even on our side helping us where like what are we doing and is it swarbrick who is making this call does, does anyone know that is it is it swarbrick it has to be him and a group of people, right? In that board where they discuss the finances and the spending. Like, it has to be Swarbrick and then a small other group of people, I would imagine. I don't think Jack just does was, that. Jack might know what he wants to do, but I'm pretty sure he still has to bring it to that group and go over, here's right. the deal, right? No, yeah. And because last one I remember when DK left, he brought Marcus Freeman on and specifically told everyone that we're bringing on Marcus Freeman so we can win a national championship. And here goes Marcus Freeman trying to get a really good OC in Ludwig. And what happened to that message? Do we not want to win a national championship? Yeah, it's it's very... And then, the, and then the, we had an open bankroll for Tommy Reese when he left, but not for him. The issue is you can't tell your fans... You are doing all you could do to get the program in a position to succeed when we see that the facts say you're not. And so now you have created a factual division and dynamic where I just don't feel that everybody's on board trying to do all they can to put Notre Dame in the best position. And it's very hurtful. Right. No. Yeah, I definitely agree. So now what do we do? Because now you got an offensive line problem. Because I looked like Ludwig was maybe going to bring his guy. Now he's out. Now you got problems. Now where do you go? Oh, yeah. I mean, it looks like the OC, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the, the offensive uh, coaches are all headed out for the most part. Um, I mean, we got that Dama analyst, but that's, you know, that's not making me do backflips or anything like that. It's a good hire, but I mean, I'm just more upset that, that Harry Heaston and Tommy Reese are gone, ironically enough, right? Tommy Reese out of all people. Um, and then our, our defense, and I mean, it wasn't our strength last year. So now it just seemed like as we headed into this off season, like things are kind of in shambles. And then, and now Notre Dame doesn't want to pay. Man, it's, it's that. <laughs> man, it's like, I really do feel bad for Freeman. I mean, this guy is giving genuine effort as much as he can. It feels like there's five of them at five different places at once. Like, running his face off all over. And it's just to not get support at this basic level is really insulting. It, it truly is. Yeah. And then, and then what happens if uh, Ryan Day goes to the NFL 
And then Marcus Freeman's like, F this, man. You guys, I'm with Brian Kelly. You guys are not doing anything to help me out. You know, I used to like, think. I'm going to go back to my alma mater. I used to think that Jobs Heartlines, uh, just because he's such a great recruiter and Ohio State guy, and, and Marcus has tried to get him to come here and he won't leave Ohio State. So I got a feeling he right. might be next in line there. But I am not, I'm not kidding. If I'm Marcus Freeman, I'm very offended. And I feel like my own people that told me they're going to put me in a position and support me to succeed are not. I Maybe Marcus is a more mature person than I am. I'm not going to be able to let this yeah. one go. If I really wanted Lugwig and it came down to that check of buyout, I'm not letting that go. It, it's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. He has to be having these conversations on the back end. Like, he, him as a head coach needs to be, like, more firm than just allowing this to happen. Like, I, I mean, I guess they don't want to do it, but like, you're going to have to speak up and say something like, well, what do you want? We're trying to win a national championship here. Like we, we, we just can't hire anyone off the street. Yeah. So it's, it's rough. Um, it, it's, I'm just not very happy. It's just, it's hard when you feel like, you give your all loving this team, loving this program, donating when you can, have no problem buying the stuff, the money go like all you just feel like we give it all, but we don't get as much back. And it isn't just results. It's just the effort to put us in as good of a position as possible. And it just feels like we give more than we get. Yeah. It feels like I lost a huge game, but just in the off season. You know, like that upsetting game where you're just like, man, this is a huge game. Dude, it's that pit in your stomach. When Notre Dame loses, it's that pit in your stomach where it just feels like you got kicked and something's wrong with the world. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> well, we'll make it Doesn't through mean, it. And it's the off season. Uh, 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 out of all times, not even regular football season. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh, what, what, it, what, what a good day to be an Irish fan, am I right? Yeah, it's it's never boring. I'll give you that. But uh, enjoy Valentine's Day, my friend. Don't let it keep you down. That's what I'm here for. Have a good one. Thanks, John. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, Thank you now. for the call, my friend. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got a couple super chats. One of them's fantastic. Mike, $10 out. Recruits will see this. Keely left over a bag. Uh, if they see we aren't willing to advance the program, they will reconsider. I don't know if this goes all the way down to recruiting like that a player's going to think they didn't pay a coach. How does that apply to me? It's just the overall dynamic of cheap and not willing to do what it takes is the aftertaste in your mouth from this news. And there's no way around it. All right, here we go. Look at this. This is a healthy dynamic, my friends. I, <laughs> he eggs me on and then I get worked up and then I yell at him and then we make up. He donates a $10 holler. Have a cold one on me, John. We will get through this. I'm going to need a cold one more than one, but I appreciate you that I no hard feelings, man. But like, this is my personality. This is why this show works. This is why I have any following at all is because I'm the guy who reacts emotionally to what's going on. I am not the guy who's going to sit there. Uh, let me look at my stat book. And then this guy's 40 time. I'm not, that is not what excites me with all this. It's the emotion of how this all makes us feel and connects to our lives. Oh, all right. So thank you for that donation, man. Even though we're arguing, you still donated. That's a healthy relationship and it's no hard feelings. I just, I don't hold back when something hits me. Will, you're up. 703 talking to me. Adam, I got you next. What's going on? Man, John, this feels worse. This feels like worse than a loss. This feels like a, a 2019 Michigan loss, man. It's just not, I don't understand why. It's just so frustrating that Notre Dame doesn't, it seems like they just don't care about winning. It's really frustrating. It's incredible. I but think, I well, wait, 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 wait. Now, I think they care about winning but only to a certain extent. That's my problem. I'm not going to say Jack Swarbrick doesn't care about Notre Dame winning. It's just to what extent are they willing to go to win to what extent? And I'm very frustrated that it feels like you're building something really positive and then you run up into this this brick wall out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what... 
I mean, I guess Parker could do well, but well, wait I mean, a second. The, wait, did I miss? Did I miss but, something? Is Parker? Did they hire this guy, or am I missing? Are we saying this is going to happen, or did it happen while I'm yelling? Well, I just think it's going to happen because it's the guy we're just going to hire within. Because like, who wants the job now after we couldn't give uh, Andy Ludwig what? you wanted okay so then if you hire from within that means you're not bringing in an offense coordinator as an offensive line coach so where do you go there so you're gonna hire from within and then yeah. you're gonna hire from within within again with chris watt we're getting more mackie by the second is how this feels with this stuff right now mm -hmm. yeah that's what it feels like but i don't know like it feels like a, like you said before, it feels like an abusive relationship. Like I get oh, yeah. so much Notre Dame. Oh like yeah, you, but we come I back. My daily but Notre we Dame come back. You keep running back with the smile yeah. on your face, ready to spend money. Yeah. Like I do my Notre Dame routine every day. I go on the message boards and now they do this to us. It's just, it's, a, it's an addiction. Notre Dame football is like an addiction, man. Like, I care so much about the team, but and the administration does it to us. But I guess that's just how it goes. Yeah, it's it's just very frustrating. And listen, I'm I'm open to the idea. I'm overreacting because I know that's how I do it. It's part of what makes this show works is whatever emotion there is, good or bad, I'm amplifying it because it's just my delivery. I could be overreacting, but what I try to step back from this and look at what message this sends, big picture to everybody. It sends a message Notre Dame's not big time and doesn't want to be big time and isn't willing to be big time. That is the message it gives off. Whether it's intended or not doesn't matter. The impression this gives off is Notre Dame's not serious about freaking winning, and I am not okay with it. Like, what will this do to recruiting? Like, do you think we could still, do you think the recruits are going to care about this? So that's what. Here's me, one. Here's, honestly, all right. Probably the most. I got two answers to that. And this is interesting. One is, I think Notre Dame does benefit in some ways from like the four for 40 thing. This is where I think some of Notre Dame's angle benefits them is. A lot of Notre Dame guys genuinely do pick Notre Dame because of family reasons and they buy into Notre Dame and they're Notre Dame guys, not just there for the coach. So I think when you have an, a, a disruption like what's going on, it can end up benefiting Notre Dame that more of our guys are there for the school than a coach. So I think that does mm -hmm. help. And then in terms of like actual recruiting, I mean, I don't. A part of it is we got spring practice in a few weeks and we don't have an offensive line coach or an offense coordinator who's recruiting those areas, right? Nobody, air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. just very frustrated. Very. Yeah. And I'm also getting to like, will Freeman actually stay? Like, that's what's scaring me now. Like, will this affect him? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, I, I'm just telling you, I, you know, listen, Notre Dame is digging its own grave in that regard. If you're going to hire this guy and bring him in and then not give him what he needs to compete when that is your mission, then we have conflicting things going on here and it's going to breed resentment. And you know what this is kind of like leading to? Here's what this is kind of leading to. This is kind of leading me to where I'm going to end up having to start defending Brian Kelly on certain things. I will never defend his lack of work ethic at the end. But now it's starting to look like maybe Kelly had a lot of good points about not getting the support he needs around here. It's hard for me to say Kelly was off when I see this even with the new guy a year later. Maybe Kelly was smarter than I thought. Yeah, it's just, this is honestly like worst case scenario with Mark Freeman. Like he's doing everything, he's doing all the work. Yep. And then, yep. You're he right. He what he wants, but it's super frustrating. So yeah. here's what we're going to do we're going to be upset and we're just going to see how mm -hmm. it goes. And then whenever they make ire, we're going to react to what we're dealing with. But, but it is mm -hmm. from now on, the rest of Marcus's time. It's going to be in the back of all of our minds, this little dynamic. And I just, I don't like mm -hmm. the feeling 
that they're not giving this guy all the support he needs to make this program in a better position. It offends me personally, and it's just, I don't know what all this is for. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. I don't know, well, man. Don't don't let it ruin your day. Yeah. Don't let it ruin your day. Let it all. It yeah. can ruin mine, but don't. <laughs> I need to let it go. Yeah. Oh. Well, I I'm not as bad as I was last night, but I'm still pretty upset. But. I think I'm madder than I was last night because I woke up to everybody else being mad and sending me messages, and then it got me worked up. Like I don't know. So. But don't let it ruin your Valentine's Day, man. Have a good day, and then we'll do it. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks for everything, John. No problem, man. Glad to be here as a sounding board. That's what we're here for. Oh, people want to talk today. 219, you're on the line. John, what the hell is going on? Why don't you ask? Hey, you're close to South Bend. Go ask Captain Jack what is if his pen broke when he opened the checkbook. You tell me what the hell's going on. Oh man, what a what a slap in the face. That that's what I feel like it is. To us, yeah, to Marcus, like that, or to how, everybody. How does Marcus feel? Yeah, I was gonna say it's a slap it's in the face everybody. to me. How do you think Marcus feels? Yeah. I mean, I mean, just a total slap in the face, and it, it's it's just a lack of effort. Like, they're not even trying. Yeah. Yep. I mean, like, you know, it's like... It's- you, listen, your family's... You're a well-connected Notre Dame family, relative who has played at Notre Dame. You have season tickets. You have the parking passes. Like, you have all that set up. All that stuff you do in good faith for Notre Dame blindly, year after year after year. Can you just hire an offense coordinator? Come on, dog. Like, come on, man. This is really what we're doing. Yeah, we could we could probably put it, get enough money in just, you know, reaching out to the fan base that could buy this guy out. Uh, I mean, come on. It, how can Notre Dame it, say with done. this? How can they say with this straight we, face, we, we don't have the money? You, we, we don't have the money. What are you talking about? That That is not true. Yeah, you're right. And we're getting laughed at over this. Really? You're not willing to buy someone out? And we should be getting laughed at. Mm -hmm. Adam, that's the thing, man. We should be. I'm getting dragged on Twitter right now. I'm getting dragged in my DMs from all the other fans that I argue with saying, John, this proves it. Your program's not even big time. You're a joke and you're wasting your time yelling every day about it. It's, I mean, it feels that way. I'm not saying to those people you're wrong. Yeah, at what point does Notre Dame not want to be laughed at? Yeah, no, here's another good point. Here's another good point. What the hell was Reese's buyout? Did he have a buyout? Did we just let Saban come in here? Because Saban's God, he magically floated Tommy to Alabama for free. Where the hell did that money go? Exactly, John. This is when me and my dad were just... Where's that money? He said, yeah, Tommy was bought out, right? So who cares? His buyout was that money to this buyout. His buyout was probably like hundred and fifty dollars or something. <laughs> like, like we're not even in the big leagues with when we have to buy people out. Have a... Adam, and I'm struggling, here's my man. My question too. I mean, when this search started, John, I think everybody that knows about our style of football knew that this was. Really good you fit. You know, one of the top candidates. Yeah, really good he fit. He was going to be the guy. Yep, in every way. A yes. good fit. All the way up until he beat USC twice last year. Like every other thing about his accomplishments, I love the balanced offense, how long he's been doing this. I love all of that. Cherry on top was the guy put up 43 and 47 and beat USC twice. That's a guy I'd be excited to welcome to Notre Dame. It all lined up. It was all in front of us. And they just aren't willing to spend the money to be great. Yeah. And so this guy runs the pro style offense. Obviously Marcus wants to run everything about him, had him as a top candidate. So how we didn't kind of know his contract situation and what we were dealing with. And if we were willing to buy him out, like all that just seems just, it just seems nuts to me. Yeah. It, it, There's no way for it not to feel like a personal insult, almost. Like, on behalf of Marcus, to Marcus, to all of us, I just don't, I don't understand it. It just seems like a very small amount of money to pay 
for the bigger picture of what we're trying to accomplish here. That That's my other problem, Adam. It's like, I'm looking at this big picture. If you really believe this is the guy to pair up with Marcus in the modern era of Notre Dame football as the new playoff era kicks off, and you believe this is really the right guy, Three million can't get a, get in the way of stopping that. Like that is the part they're looking at this so small that it, it bothers me. They're not on the same page. I mean, this is the first time in my life that I can remember, and I've been going to game my entire life that I last night really thought, you know something? I don't think I want to spend the money for these oh, season you will. tickets. You will. You and know it. No, no, no. You know it. You're saying. Northern. No, you. I know <laughs> how you are. You're saying that now. And when we get into the season, you're going to be like, John, I can't wait to get up before the sun comes up and be tailgating. We're, it's who we are. Cool. We both know we're going to do that. They point. got us by the balls here because they know we're going to do it. It's the, it's the first time the thought went through my head, though, John. That's the sad part. This is the first time. Because I feel like for, for the first time felt like they're not trying. They don't care. You know, nine and three, ten and two, you know, with we don't even sell out the stadium anymore. Isn't that an issue? Yeah. It's so now what? Now what are they gonna do, Adam? Who do you, where do you go now? Because now know. now you don't only just where? have an offense coordinator problem, you got an offensive line problem. So now where are you gonna go? Yeah, what do you do? Does that mean we could only get hire someone that's like from like a Mac school or on staff? Because anyone you go for is going to have a buyout. Yeah, I I don't know, but this is or very fired. Listen, any dream I had of Kelly's out of here, things are going to get back on track. Freeman has a better personality to be able to work with the higher ups to get things done. All of that, I really liked and believed in and was hopeful we'd see a change in the the interpersonal dynamics between head coach and and upper brass management i was very hopeful of that and this undoes that that now i feel like we're not all pulling on the same end of the rope and it it's it's a big negative no imagine what marcus was thinking today i mean i can't even imagine being in his i mean he, he he's got to be thinking what uh, am i doing here These he's got to be furious they're he, not even helping they're not even helping me out. Yeah. How could you not be furious? And you know what else? He probably already has some of that with some of the NIL or some of the recruiting things that he wanted to do to get over the hump and wasn't able to. But even I will say, I understand some of that. Notre Dame values were only willing to go so far on certain things, academics. I get that. I, I That is not what I'm complaining about. But when a place that is as successful as Notre Dame has been tells me they're not willing to pay a few million to get this program in the right spot. Nope. Can't do it. No. Can't and do we, it. We've talked a lot, John. And we say one of the biggest things that we want out of our Notre Dame program is to be respected nationally. Number one. And this just. Number one thing. And this just. You're Listen, being laughed at. Lou and said the it. last thing you're getting. Hold on. Yep. You're bringing something up here. Let me. Hold on. Hang with me. I want to read this. John Fisher says, I'm the biggest Notre Dame fan anywhere, and I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. They are laughing at us here in country Alabama, and it's sickening. Pay the money. I mean, it's just we're looked at as not being serious about football. That offends me. Yeah, and the fan, fan base wants to be serious. Everyone besides a few people at Notre Dame that are just stopping it for some reason. I just don't get it. Yep. Me neither, man. Um, but don't let it ruin your day. Take the wife out for dinner on Valentine's day. Don't let, don't be a jerk to her because of this. Oh, uh, she'll be, she's already, she's already fired up about it too. So, uh, it's, uh, got it. well, I think everyone is, isn't this amazing though, that this is the only thing the Notre Dame fan base has ever agreed on. 100% agreed on how bad this look is. The only yep. thing we've ever agreed on. Yep, Everybody. exactly. <laughs> Dude, before you jumped on, that's exactly what I opened with is, I always say, what would it take for all Notre Dame fans to be on the same page with something? I didn't want it to be this, but here we are. Yeah, uh, it's just a terrible look, but I'll, I, I'm going to get off, John, and let you get some other callers, but all right. it's just a 100% terrible look, and yep. I hate it. Yep, me too. Hang in there, buddy. See ya. All right.
We'll talk to you later. later. Oh my God. People are not happy. People are just not happy. Hey, I got a couple donations. I got to mention Eric Tomo, $50 a holler. Long time listener. You're not overreacting. This is why I listen to you, brother. I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. $50 holler. That's a big deal. You just take care of uh, my phone lines for a while now with that. Thank you very much. Phone lines are free. Every minute I get yelled at here, it costs me money on the phones. Another one, $9.99, $10. I'll appreciate that. CB, Irish and Charlotte. This look is bad, but how much worse does it look if George Ayers, Ludwig, now that their OC just went to the Ravens? You know what it shows? Some teams are willing to invest and do what it takes to be elite at this sport. Others value getting it just good enough to get all your money, fill up the stadium, but actually winning it isn't important as long as the money comes in. Those are the dynamics we're working in, folks. Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciate that. Oh, okay. 765, make it come alive. Good morning. Johnny, it's Matt Miller. How are we doing, sir? Frustrated. How are you doing? Not good, man. Not good. I don't know. I haven't listened to the whole show this morning. I've been taking my kid back and forth to the doctor's office. But, man, I'm telling you what, this whole thing transcends football for this program. And I'm going to tell you why. You're going to sit here and tell me that Notre Dame, the University of Notre Dame, the one that has some of the most rich fans and donors in this United States and any college sport, no one reached out to any of the donors to see if they could do anything about covering this. You know what? I know. Well, here's my heartbeat. issue. Here's my issue. It, it wouldn't need to come to that. Noted, that's my issue. No, it, it, the, not. I am not absolutely looking at a, not. a big bank vault that's empty that says football and the bank vault's empty. And we need to call our alumni who work at these businesses and say, donate. Notre Dame's not in that position. They have the money. They are simply not willing to spend it. And that offends me to my core. No, I'm right there with you. Like it should never come down to that. But if it did have to come down to that, you know that the donors and you know the alumni would take care of that. Am I wrong? I cannot believe there's a world that Notre Dame did not know what this number was right away. And they're flirting with them. They got him out at the hockey game. Everybody knows he's the guy they want. Every It's all public and all that. You're telling me they didn't know till they got all the way down the road that the offensive line coach left thinking this guy was bringing in his guy? We got this far down this road only to figure out we weren't willing to pay. Somebody messed up. Somebody messed something up it's, here. It's bad it business. It's bad number. optics and it's bad practical business. It's not even the fact, and correct me if I'm wrong, I love this guy, this Ludwig dude. I really wanted them to bring him in. Yeah, but it goes yeah. a guy, that, a guy who, who puts <laughs> up 43 and 47 to beat USC two times last year. I got a lot of warm feelings That's for him, too. Point. I got a lot of warm point. feelings for him. If, that, if you have any doubt, just look at the USC games. That's all you need. Your biggest rival. He handles them. Every 43 time. and he didn't Caleb just Williams or not. and he didn't just handle them 28 to 24. 43 and 47. I was very interested in seeing that in Notre Dame with better talent, but nope, never mind. Maybe there's a good high school. Maybe there's a good high school the, the, the coach problem. in the Catholic League right. I grew up in in Chicago, and we could just see if they want to come over, run the offense. Why not? Sorry for interrupting you. I'm just kind of animated on this right now. I know good. you are too. Good. I don't know a lot of people are in this community, but my thing is like this goes deeper than just missing out on this candidate. What message, what optics is this showing to any other potential person? Yep. Let alone Marcus Freeman, who's your guy, who is now tallying up. Okay, you know, yep. they make me hire. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard they made him hire Tommy Reese last year as a part of the program deal. And they put this optic out earlier in the year after Bama was after him or a few weeks ago. Oh, we're going to match anything that Bama offers for Tommy Reese. Okay, 
you're getting a proven man. Like, why is that just a Notre Dame discount deal for Tommy? You know, oh, well, he was with us for 10 years of his life. So we're going to do anything we can to retain him, even though he may not be the best. And he's not the best compared to these two. Him and Ludwig head to head. There's no, it's not even a comparison. It's the optics is the optics. Who's going to come in now and want to play second fiddle? Who's going to want to come in now and not leverage the hell out of it? Might not even be second fiddle. We might be, we might be down to the third or the fourth fiddle because I was told Colin Klein was one of these people that was very, very interesting or interested, or they were getting close there and it fell apart. So we might be down to the third or fourth option, and it's a compounding problem because now you got an offensive line issue too. So this has been Correct. this was very sloppy and mishandled, and I'm very, very frustrated, and I feel very, very bad for Marcus Freeman, who I feel is giving his all, and he's not getting the resources he needs. No, absolutely not. So, like, you're going to pay a premium now for someone that was farther down on the list you're probably going to end up paying more in the long run. No? Yeah, I I well, would I guess or Ludwig? I guess it depends on what, what they who getting. they hire. Return on investment. Return it, on investment. It, man. Yeah, it's this is just there's no way this isn't a horrible look. Practically, perceptually, optics-wise, the message it sends the fans, the message it sends the whole country that cares about football. In every single arena you want to name, this is a big, fat loss, period. Just like, I've, I don't get offended easily at all, ever. Um, but as a Notre Dame fan, like, I'm offended. Yeah, you because should be. They, you know, it's like, they take what, I mean, we're the only ones, like, we will fill that place. And we will fill it every time that we have to. Yeah. Every time there's a game, you know, it's yeah. always... Somebody said that we don't sell it out, but we do. And if we're not there, we're selling tickets. Either way, you know, if we're selling the ticket, we're just taking a note from, you know, the head brass over there. You got to make a buck, you know, save a buck, make a buck. Yeah. Um, but like, we'll sell, we'll sell it out. We'll buy the concessions. We'll buy the jerseys, the ninety dollar Under Armour polos from the store. Um. But, but we aren't can't we? To- that's what the, that's the problem get us what we want. as a fan. That's the problem. We have no problem doing all this because we really love Notre Dame and we want to be a part of it any way we can. It really just is personally hurtful when you see evidence that shows that it feels like we care more than the higher ups do about us being great. It's, it's a very, very tough thing to overcome in my mind. Yeah. I'm kind of at the end of the rope. Like, it's like, man, like I, I'm tried and true. I've never seen a national championship in my lifetime. I thought we were damn close. But now how, I mean, if we don't get what we want, or, we, or Marcus doesn't get who he wants, how long does this set us back? And well, then further than that. Yeah, you're going to have to figure long, something out real quick. That, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Further than that, how long does it set us back after Marcus runs into this headlong year after year and faces this resistance? Like, he's gone. He's not sticking around. He's too smart. I feel like that's something that needs to be considered in all of these discussions. Like, I feel like you need, it isn't just about that money and that check. That is not all of it. There has to be more involved of of what this looks like, how you're supporting your head coach, what that relationship looks like, what you can help him with or not. I, I just, maybe it's as simple as Jack just needs to retire. Maybe Jack needs to retire and they get a younger, more modern AD or something uh, that I, I don't know what needs to happen, but I'm very upset. What about Tommy's buyout? Did we not, or were we not, you know, as intelligent as Notre Dame? Yeah, claims I don't know. Be, I don't know what know, his buyout so was. Did we not write in, you know, a buyout option? That yeah, Utah, where'd that money go? Yeah, did? where'd that Come money on. go? I, I don't know, man. It's very, very frustrating. And Freeman must feel handcuffed. And uh, if he ends up being a really good head coach and then going somewhere else where they'll actually give him a chance to win, I wouldn't blame him for it. It's going to hurt me, but good for him. Uh, I don't know. I'll let you get to it, but thanks for taking my call. No problem, thanks man. Thanks for doing the show. We really, everybody appreciates it. No problem. Thanks for calling. It, we'll make it. Have yep. a good one. Go Irish, baby. Yep. Man, people are just sad today. (laughs) 
Six one five, make it come alive. You're on the air. John, John, how are you doing today? I am slightly agitated. Well, so am I. Um, I've got kind of a unique perspective on this. I'm actually from Mishawaka, Indiana. My mother worked at Notre Dame, been a lifelong Notre Dame fan. I grew up out west. I lived in Salt Lake City. Seen Coach Ludwig, seen what he's done. I live in Nashville, Tennessee now. So I saw him at Vanderbilt go into Notre Dame Stadium and almost beat Notre Dame. Yeah, I, what I'm was that? 2018? Was that 2018? Um, I think. I think so. Or something. I don't know. So. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm just dumbfounded by this. He was the best candidate for the position. Yep. The Everything best. lined up. Everything lined up very, very well. Something else about him is I don't think the guy wants to be a head coach. He is so in tune and confident in what he's doing as an offensive coordinator that I think he understands that's his wheelhouse and he's, he's going to stick to it. Yeah. And the other thing so, is at 58 years old, you might figure that would be a little late to want to get in and start that at 58. And I looked at that as an advantage for Marcus, because you would have a guy with 30 years of experience that isn't trying to just showcase and then go somewhere else. He could stick around and grow with the man full years and then retire. That would have been a really great that, plan. It's gone. That's a that's a great point. Being here in SEC country, I get to work this morning. There's a Georgia fan that works here, a Tennessee fan that works here, and a Vanderbilt fan that works here. So what do you think I walked into this morning? How'd that go? Happy Valentine's Day wishes? Well, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Scott. Yeah. At Notre Dame is bound to be nine and four. Yeah. You know? And move, moves like this, moves like this are terrifying as a fan. You sit there and you're like, I live in Nashville. I see Vanderbilt. Is that what Notre Dame wants to be? A Duke, a Vanderbilt? As long as the money comes I mean, in. As long as that. No, no. They got enough banners in the rafters that all of us are going to show up. And I think as long as the money it keeps adding up, that's enough for them. That's what their actions show. And, and, That's and, what their actions dictate is that just as long as the money keeps coming in, they're pretty much fine with whatever happens. But there is no real stated clear goal of being elite. That's obvious. Oh, that, that's obvious. And the problem with that is, is everybody else sees it, but the powers to be at Notre Dame. That's what I heard this morning at work. You guys aren't going to get the five-star recruits, they're smart enough to realize that Notre Dame ain't going to do what it takes. There, there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. This, this was a horrible the, – the effects of this decision are, are going to be felt for years to come. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, I don't know. I mean, it's certainly possible. Let me put it this way. Whoever they hire, even if I like the guy and it's a good hire and it actually ends up working out and being okay, I am still going to have logged in the back of my mind that Notre Dame still wasn't willing to do what it takes with the primary candidate. Like, even if it goes well, I'm not going to forget that this is an issue and something I got to worry about. At least until Jack retires, maybe it'll change them. But I don't know how much power he has individually on writing checks or not. Um but even if they hire somebody and it goes well, I still have this information banked that the that the program wasn't willing to go for the A1 guy, and it's unacceptable. And, and to me, one of the worst parts of this is you vindicate Brian Kelly. Yeah. Yep. And it, very, it really hurts me. Him. It really hurts me. You, it you, really hurts me to uh, say. But maybe the guy was spot on on some of this. You know, I, 
I've been a lifelong Notre Dame fan, and ever since Brian Kelly was there, they got in good quarterbacks, good quarterbacks, and they got, you know, other than possibly Ian Book, they regressed there. Yep. And so I'm glad. I'm oh wait, glad even even gone. Ian Book re- even 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 Book regressed. Wimbush, Book, those guys, the longer they were around, the worse the numbers yeah. got. It was actually quite hilarious in an embarrassing way that the more games those guys started here, the worse their numbers were. Like, you want to talk about a red flag for a college football team? The longer the quarterback plays for you, the worse he gets. <laughs> yeah, Un- and it, it was every, every quarterback during Brian Kelly's tenure – and so, look, I mean, God bless Tommy Reese. I hope he finds what he's looking for, but I'm glad that he's gone. But Notre Dame majorly struck out. We could have had a great offensive coordinator and a great offensive line coach. Let's not forget that. Uh, Utah was a great team. You sit there and watch their offensive line. You watch their offense. Yep. Physical. The guy Um, develops quarterbacks. They're balanced. They run the ball for power. They also can whip it around 43 and 47 points. They put up in two games and two wins against USC last year. I was very much looking forward to that being on our side, but it's not going to happen, man. It ain't going to happen. Well, it's, you know, it's highly disappointing and, and, Two other points I'd like to make is, yeah, this is going to be used against us in, in recruiting for for sure, especially if the guy goes to Georgia. I mean, how heartbreaking will that be? Somebody's, rich somebody's saying that we, somebody's we, saying Georgia just hired a new OC already. Unless that's not accurate, somebody well, in the ch- somebody in the chat just put that in a minute, one minute ago. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, well, I hope it's true. Notre Dame needs to tuck their tail and hire the guy. Yeah. So I, I don't know, man. This is this is just rough. I and I don't know. Yeah, somebody. You're somebody, all right. That's for sure. Style uh, You're somebody. The other point the other point I want to make and just get your opinion on, and it's my, my last point. Do you think this was you know, the administration has has worked with the the coaching staff trying to do some new things and, and getting some things changed in Notre Dame with getting players in there. From what I've heard, I don't know if that's correct or not, but do you think this is Swarbeck and, uh, and our president kind of throwing a bone to the academics at Notre Dame and saying, well, we're not going to overpay for people. Education is the most important thing. I don't, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that cut and dry and obvious, but there's some of that dynamic that's always gone on at Notre Dame. Like, I don't know how else to put that. I don't think it's that obvious and cut and dry. But the history of Notre Dame has this in it. Even Leahy, when he got on a roll, they had a problem with it. And they were like, slow down. We don't want to turn into a football factory because how that might look. That actually happened that they tried to put a governor on Leahy saying we don't want to turn into a football factory. So there's history of Notre Dame on the academic side doing that. And I... It's a part of this. There are a lot of academics at Notre Dame that don't like football and resent it. There are a lot of people that work at Notre Dame that resent the football program or what it represents. And to me, that's a person who doesn't understand Notre Dame and has no business being there or benefiting from a degree from there. Get the hell away from my school if you're not going to respect its history and the only reason anybody cares about it. That football program is paying the bills there. And it needs to be respected for that. That is the reason all these degrees mean something. That's the reason seeing Notre Dame on a piece of paper hits different. Nobody sees Notre Dame and the first thing they think is, 
Uh, oh, yeah, that ac accounting program was pretty good. We did a lot of math. No, they pictured Notre Dame football's history. That's what made all of this happen. If it wasn't for that, this would be a tiny Catholic school near a lake in the middle of nowhere no one cared about. Excellent point. It well, would look, be. It would be. It's a fact. We, we With, really... Without early football success spreading this brand from regional to national, none of this academia and the research and the, the, the charity and all, none of it would ever be happening at Notre Dame if it wasn't for early football success, elite football success. And to turn your back on it 100 years later is wrong. Well, look, John, we uh, really enjoy your show. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll Can't you tell? Can't you tell? Yeah, it's just a, bun a barrel of monkeys. Yeah, a barrel of monkeys. We're just laughing. It's so relaxing listening we, to John. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. We, we, we enjoy your show. We'll be praying for you and pray for us Notre Dame fans that have to live in SEC country. Man, I gotta, I really feel for you guys. There are a lot of you, and you all need to stick together, stay strong, and do what you can for us. All right, man? You got it. Have a great day. You Thanks too. For your time. No problem. Thanks for calling, buddy. Oh, man. Nine, nine, did I already read this? $9.99, $10 all, This look is bad. How much worse is the look of George Iris Ludwig? Apparently, they hired somebody. Go, go dye your beard again. Dude, I, I do not dye my beard. It's, it's silver old mixed with red. I don't know what you want me to do. There's no dyeing it. Oh, look at this. $20 holler super sticker from John Fisher. I really appreciate that, man. Pay for some phone lines. You know what I'm saying? Pay for some phone lines. What else do we got? 720. Where do you want to go? Hello? Hey, John. Yeah. Yo, what up? You're up. Hey, my name is Brandon DeSani. Love the show. I'm out here in Colorado. So, Little little back information. Um, I'm a software sales rep, but I also coach high school football. Played at a state championship program out here in Colorado. Played at a D2 school in North Dakota. Huge Notre Dame fan. Um, but, you know, there, there's a few caveats to this thing that just strike me. One, Notre Dame has a law school. How, how are we even talking to this guy? knowing that we're not going to buy out this contract. Yep. Right? It should have been one of the first, it should have been one of the first things when you get into interest with him to know what those finances look with to avoid getting into something where it's going to be a bad look to get out. You need to get ahead of that. And it should have been one of the first things looked at and talked about before they brought the guy on a date to the hockey game and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. You're setting up Marcus, Marcus Freeman, who, I, I adore this guy. I think he's the right coach, but you're setting him up for failure. And if you're not thinking like for me, I'm making that check mark. Like, Hey, you guys just set me up. That's, that's embarrassing. And the other thing is, you know, I, and I, and I believed in this coach and I'm pissed off about it, you know, but losing Tommy Reese and gaining this Ludwig was a bonus. Tommy Reese could now coach Stanford. This guy beats USC two years in a row with far less talent and is putting better kids in the NFL and putting lesser kids in the NFL. Yep. You know, the Broncos have their left tackle that that guy developed from him. Like him or hate him, that kid, that guy did, that kid didn't even play college high school football. And that guy, he came from his program. So it's like, this was a good fit. You, you, this you was a, a this was a good fit in a lot of ways, man. 58 years old, probably not looking to use you for a year. Bounce to head coaching job might stick around. You could develop with them. He's a good quarterback developer. They run a physical offense that's also balanced. They can kind of do both. Like there is a lot to like. Good quarterback developer, which is going to be a, a big important piece of this moving forward. It all lined up really well. I never in my dreams could I imagine this would hold it up. It's so Notre Dame-y that it makes me want to slam my, punch myself in the face. Me too. Well, here's my last, I, have, I just have two quick questions. One, 
does, when does Notre Dame realize at some point you're losing your brand, right? Like Notre Dame is starting to get on that point where they're, and this is just from my perspective, working in software, you're kind of like the Facebook now. Instagram's more important. Twitter's more important. You're, you're starting to retract, right? Yeah. When are you going to stop living off the coattails of the 1980s? But you know what the I answer mean, to that is? You know what the answer to that is? The only answer to that is here what, we are again. The only answer is when people stop giving money yeah. at a rate that it starts to affect them. And I just don't see that ever happening because there is such a large percentage of this fan base that goes to Notre Dame games just for a picnic in the park and a sightseeing tour. It isn't there to watch Notre Dame win. And there's a large amount of this fan gate fan base that just wants to hang out, go to a reunion. It doesn't matter if we win or lose. It's not a priority. They're going to keep spending the money. The only thing that changes any of this is if real literally half that stadium's empty sometime and it's never going to happen. It's just not, it's never going to happen that way because too many people don't care about the results. They just want to go there for something to do go sightseeing if we lose. Well, I had a good day. The weather was nice. I saw my law school, buddy. Never mind that we just lost. There's a lot of that in this fan base, and it's a part of the reason my hair's falling out. Well, and I think what Notre Dame needs to realize is there a lot of their fan base, I'm a kid from Northeast Colorado, right? A Catholic kid. I'm not a, I, we have nothing in common with people from Boulder. And I'm not a Nebraska fan, so tons of my friends and family out in Northeast Colorado, Notre Dame fans, because we're it's Catholic. You know, you go Kansas, you go in that Midwest, Kansas. That's a bunch of Catholic families there yeah. in Eastern Colorado that love Notre Dame, and you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose them. And I'm 37. I don't remember the last time they won a national championship. Yeah, and I'm 30. And, now, and, I'm, and now 38. I'm 38. I'm 38. So see, you and I are in that. Yeah. Wi- you're in the. You and I are in this window of. Growing up, just missing Notre Dame being elite, but being close enough to that window that our our fathers and our grandfathers, we were like connected to it. But then our entire cognizance, there hasn't been even a major bowl win in our cognitive lifetimes. So we're kind of caught in this in between. I I don't know, man. It, it, It just feels like they're not willing to do what it takes to put us in the best position to succeed. And that's all fans ask for from their leaders in their athletic department. Just put us in a position to be able to compete. It just feels like that's not what's happening. And I have a hard time being okay with that. Me too. I don't put us in a position to look stupid. We look like idiots. And it's like, you, you braided around. This is a guy you sent Colin Klein back. You know, these, I'm telling you, we look, and the kids these days, like I coach high school football at a good program. The other day, I'm, and I'm not even kidding you, I thought I got a running back, the freshman, and he looks like Jerome Bennis. And that's why I said, I'm like, you look like the bus. He doesn't even know who that is. Yeah. He's, they're losing it. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's going to be, they better get on this because the other thing is Marcus Freeman gets in the playoffs. Or he's gone. He will get, they, they, someone will come and buy that guy up. And hey, I, if I you're promise, not getting the support, I, if you're not getting the support you need, then I wouldn't blame them. And it would hurt me a lot, but I wouldn't I, blame them. You got to do what's best for you. That's how this all works. That's how this all works. So we, if, if that came up, I wouldn't blame them. And it'd be Notre Dame's fault. We had a chance to hurt Alabama by sending Tommy Reese there and hurt USC. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Coordinator that- <laughs> Yeah. Hey, they don't know how to play chess, man. John, thank you so much. I love the show. You got a big fan base out here in Colorado. My family loves you. You have a great day. So I appreciate you. So you. Thanks time. for calling, man. Call again. Beautiful. Love good. You. What a good caller, man. I, I love you guys. Uh, also, Mark Rogers, the voice of college football has dropped in here. If you guys like college football stuff on YouTube, Mark Rogers channel. And I don't even understand how Mark does it. Mark covers the whole country. He's got every different team, people on for every different team, big picture stuff, small picture stuff, every conference. I could barely keep my mind together, wrapped tight enough to do Notre Dame. Mark's everywhere, and I owe Mark a show. Mark, I don't know if you're still here or not, but I owe you a hit. I got to get back over there. My bad. Um, But thanks for stopping in. Oh, let's see. 
818. Make it great. Whoa, John. Aren't these just the doldrums of Notre Dame football? Doesn't it just come with the territory? Isn't this just like what we're just always used to? Hey, listen, Rodney. <laughs> listen, man. I always say, I always say, I, I start so many of my programs saying, Notre Dame fans never agree on anything. No matter what happens, somebody's on this side, somebody's on that side. I finally found something we all agree on. The only problem is that we all hate it. It's just, as you said, the best way of encapsulating all this, because here's the thing, man. It probably isn't as bad as it appears. It's, but it is, no doubt, a bad look. That's the thing. Now, wait it, a second. All right, now, wait, 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 wait. I think I, I think I agree with you and disagree with you. Practically, there is a chance this isn't as big of a deal as I am reacting and making it. However, perceptually, I feel there's damage done here nationally that you can't just undo. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Perceptually, you can't yeah, put you can't yeah. put this one back into two. Perceptually. Well, this, okay, and this is my response to that. This is what I've been thinking through in the last uh, hour or so. Because I actually looked up this news on your, when I saw it on the, the uh, thumbnail yeah. for the video. And then I got caught up doing stuff, and I didn't even realize it was already well into the 10 o'clock hour. Anyway, um, it, it dep- okay, first of all, it depends on who they hire. Okay, that's a big issue here. Yeah. Because this is what I'm thinking. This is how Notre Dame could maybe get. We don't know all the information going on behind closed doors. Certainly, right now, it looks bad because that's what we've seen in the past. It went through my head, of course, was Urban Meyer. He was much smart. That was a much bigger thing. That's the head coach. But that's the first thing that came to my head. 11, 11 o'clock hour. Granted, they came in late. Florida was already there. But you know what I'm saying. Basically, they couldn't give him a couple of the. The things he wanted to that he was going to compromise with them on, and then we saw what happened with that. Um, so again, this isn't that degree because here's what could be the case: Is it possible that they had a one A candidate and a one B candidate? And yeah, and yeah, and you didn't get either one of them, Rodney. Yes, and you thing. didn't get either one of them. They already did that, and they didn't get either one. Colin Klein and this guy. Now it's strike three. No, I no, think. No, no. no I, I get what you're saying, John. Theoretically, that's what we see on the surface, and you're probably right. I'm not trying to make this all roses here, but I'm saying I'm just holding out all my judgment until we see who they pick. Because maybe it's somebody who is waiting on something. Who knows? And they're like, well, we'd rather pay this $2.8 million contract for someone that we want maybe just that much more than this person, but then this person we don't have to do any of that with, and we still like them pretty much just as much. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that that, that is what's going to happen, but I'm saying before we get crazy, that was going on in the back of my mind. Fair? Maybe? And then maybe not. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Yeah, it's... It could all work out practically just fine. I don't like the message this sends everybody about the way we operate. Like I am perfectly open to them. They could hire somebody and it could end up being fine. That's fine. But big picture, there's just a big dark cloud now where I feel like I have evidence. The administration's not willing to go all the way to make us elite. And I it makes you just question, what is all this for then? If the people that are supposed to care the most aren't, what is all this for? What is my existence yeah. for? I'm having an existential and, and, leprechaun crisis. And, and again, John, and all that today will be true. What I'm trying, what I'm hoping for, it's not what I'm trying to come up with, what I'm hoping for is, there are a couple things that happen that too. Just like we know heads that right now, I'm going to go to that side of it in just a second. I'm just playing kind of devil's advocate for both sides. The other thing, too, is, you know, who knows what all is involved in this. You know, a lot more goes into it. It could be one of those things they, they finally kind of came. Who knows? Like maybe they were going to come to that agreement, and then it was like there was one more concession they would have had to make that we don't know about. Maybe... You know, his family didn't really want to move, you know, whatever. And then so it was like, okay, now and it gets released to the public or gets released to the media 
is it's worth 2.8 million. But there's more to it than that. Again, that's what I'm saying. Let's just wait and see what happens, and then I'll see who they hire. But um, even if I'm not letting Notre Dame off the hook on this, even if what you're I, I don't even if don't get me wrong, I don't want to. But either. but even if what you're saying is true, Notre Dame still messed this up by letting Harry leave. Because you were making room for Ludwig's new OC before you even got the guy to sign a contract. So somebody messed up here at the Mendoza School of Business that I'm supposed to genuflect to every time I enter that campus. Somebody messed up. John, let me push back on that a little bit too, maybe. Okay, again, I went through a lot of emotion, man. I felt that this morning. Wait till I had an hour to calm down and you're still doing the show. So you have to, you know what I mean? But... Okay, do we know that Harry Heastan, now I think if Reese comes back, he's there. Do we know that Harry Heastan would have retired no matter who they were bringing in because he was just, okay, if you were Reese, so I'm gone. I was doing this kind of as a favor, sort of thing. So we don't know that the Harry Heastan, or maybe we do, that that was tied in with, with Red Wig and whatever. We don't know that. It could be he was going to leave anyway. Um, so I'm just putting that out there. Um, the other thing, Again, man, there, there could be more to this whole thing. Like who they're going to hire as an offensive coordinator could be tied into this. We don't know. You know, when Stucky was hired, a lot of people were upset that they didn't take the two of the, the guys from Purdue. They had more experience and everything. We're looking now at a situation that has played out very well for Notre Dame, we think, and especially going into next year. Let's just hold up. That's all I'm saying. I'm but, upset too. But we're, t- but we're discussing two different things. Because like I, it could work out. Like I totally get what you're saying. This this move yeah, do, this yeah. move doesn't mean there's no way Notre Dame's going to end up with a good offense coordinator that can make the offense work. But that is separate than whether it works or doesn't work. It's separate than me knowing Notre Dame didn't go after the number one guy the head coach wanted over money. Like even if the new stuff works, it doesn't undo what I know about the university now. And I'm still going to be mad. Even if it works great, I'm going to be mad about the, the knowing this dynamic. Well, it, again, you, you're probably right, no matter what happens. All I'm saying is I'm, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to give out a little, and I'm, I'm, kid, I'm probably going to be wrong. And be like, well, John, you're right. And I was, no, I'm but right Rodney, right. Rodney, this is too. healthy. This is healthy, though. I need yeah. somebody to come in here and try and, balance me out a little bit because I am the way I am. And I know that. Um, and, and it's healthy. I'm not fighting with you. I get it. I'm just still going to find oh, no, no, something no, no, to not no, like. And, and, John, and, I, and I know you're not. I know you're not. Like, we, can, we, can be, we can almost be talking about this and I can be the one feeling like you. Maybe it would be you that would be calling me down a little bit because you're trying to look at the other side. Yeah. Um, I will say this. It wasn't something that was said a little bit ago. And I don't want to say I told you so or anything, but so now I'm taking the other side of it. You know, the other side that I'm definitely feeling, yeah, man, that is why I've never been as quick to criticize Kelly the way some people did. I, I, yes, I get it. His personality is a little off putting. Definitely. No question. But I think Kelly is a little better than people realize at, again, the culture building he had, he had established. And I think if you will, if you saw that early on in, in the tenure, Kelly did go after recruiting a little harder than he did later. I, I did notice that. And he got burned several times. Yeah, that's what and I was going to say. Again. He did get burned and because... He had been, he, people just assume he's lazy. I, I'm not, and again, I'm pushing back because I don't know I'm not there. Is it possible Kelly just redirected his energy into other ways? It's like, I have these three things that I have to eat you know, on, and I'm taking 5% off this because it's more beneficial to do 10% of this. And I'm just saying, man, we, and I'm also a little worried, too, because I'm like, is Freeman going to be like, okay, this just isn't worth it, and he's going to go skating in two, three years, because he he's going to give Notre Dame the benefit of the doubt in a few years. I don't think there's any doubt. That's his personality. But, so yeah, conceptually speaking, and if that is true, and if there's no more to this than that, I mean, if you find out the guy they wanted all along is the guy that they're getting, but it's just he didn't know for sure he had to wait, and whatever, then... I'm just saying, I'm holding out that little bit of hope that, okay, maybe it isn't the way it's being reported. Because doesn't nobody know what a bad look that is? Don't they know that that's a bad look? And I'm thinking, we've got to be more savvy than that. Yeah, it's I'm rough. I'm hoping. 
Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's bad, John. And I'm wondering, do you think, if that 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 is going to get out, so I'm holding out hope there's more to this than that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, And I hope you're right. I just, I, I don't know if there's more to this than meets the eye or not, man. It's just kind of upsetting. Um, So I don't know, man, but I appreciate you giving me a call, kind of balancing me out on the other way. Like, I'm always open to that. It's just, uh, my immediate response to this was very harsh, and I think it was justified. Oh, yeah. I saw the thumbnail. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I didn't really read that much about it. I figured I'd just call in real time and kind of talk about it. But, yeah. Yeah. On the surface, it sucks. All I'm saying is just give it a couple of days here. We'll see what happens. And then we can, you know, once the big picture uh, starts, or once the picture starts to clear up, then we can absolutely, you know, go at them hard because. This is a bad look, and I'm so tired of, of hearing. It's like this, John. We, anybody says the United States is the richest country in America, yet we don't have the other 10 countries that are among the richest all have health care for their citizens. It's the same kind of thing. Like, you have the money. We just, it, it, it's all bureaucratic BS. And image and tradi- it, it, it's, that's what it feels like. That's yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. See if it actually is. It's very frustrating. Um, oh, all right, Rodney. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Oh, God. Happy Valentine's Day, Irish fans. Thanks also, you. I don't want to do this to you, but people are saying your phone's still messed up. I don't want to end uh, on that, but I'm just letting you know people are saying it's uh, a little scruffy. Oh, no. I know. I'm sorry, okay. Rodney. Okay. Don't Don't let it get you down, though. You're good to go, buddy. Have a good one. Yeah, later okay. dog uh i always feel bad for him because he has a lot to say and then his phone is underwater half the time he's scuba diving scuba diving three zero four give me some more what's going on hey john how you doing man i'm a little frustrated I before i called you back before the clemson game first time listener long time or long time listener first time caller I appreciate that. What's on your mind, man? I get up last night. I work third shift. I'm on my way to work, and the news was breaking, and I get to work, and I start listening about it, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And when Tommy Reese left, I'm sure Captain Jack told him, go out and get the best guy you can. He goes out, finds a perfect OC for what we want to do and has him go out there and look like a freaking fool in front of the whole nation, they're going to use that against him in recruiting, too. They might as well put big red clown shoes on him to go out to Utah and say, hey, come out here and be our OC. Oh, by the way, they probably ain't going to buy you out now. It's ridiculous. I've been a Notre Dame fan my whole life, man. I got my grandson all fired up about getting to go to the spring game. He's excited. He runs through the house screaming, go Irish, fight Irish, number one. And I hear this news last night, and I've dealt with so much with the Irish being a fan, hearing all the bull that I hear back here in West Virginia. It's insane. With I was at the Marshall game. And yeah, I had to come home to that. That uh, was fun. Yeah, and and, and you know what else? All this it, the uh, the oh, blue and gold game. Ahead, buddy. I was so excited to go to the blue and gold game. I figured we were going to have Sam Hartman, and that's exciting. We were going to have the new offensive coordinator to watch. You would have you could have Buckner on the other side as a quarterback to watch. Like there was a lot to be excited about. I just thought we had this. I thought I just. Maybe this is my fault because the last few days, ever since the video came out of them courting Ludwig at the Notre Dame hockey game, I kind of thought this was in the works. Notre Dame's doing their due diligence. A few days from now, we'll get the announcement. Maybe this is my fault for thinking Notre Dame had it under control. I don't think you flirt with that guy in public at the Notre Dame home hockey game unless he's your guy because you should know that's how it's going to look if everybody sees you doing that and you don't land them. I maybe this is my fault for assuming they had this more tidied up than they did. Maybe that's on me. 
I don't understand why they would even go through the whole rigmarole, the whole deal. I mean, why do you do that? Me neither. Are you kidding me? Because you got to know that they number up Marcus front. Freeman look like an idiot. And not only him, they made the OC for Utah look like an idiot because he was ready to take the damn job. Right. Yeah, it's just now he's got to go back to them and yeah. say, "Well, yeah, exactly." <laughs> and and the oh. other thing is, not only that, but now this has caused a Notre Dame offensive line problem too. If you believe the rumors that a part of Harry stepping down was Ludwig wanting to bring his guy in, now you have that problem. So now you got another problem to to figure out. I. This is a bad I look. Some don't believe that. I feel bad for Marcus. Harry left I feel bad for Marcus. His boy left. He tried to say he wanted to. It's his son's senior year. He wanted to spend time with him. All right. Why didn't you bring that out two weeks ago? Something's going on inside internally that we can't see. But Marcus Freeman is the one that the whole nation's seeing that look like an idiot because we won't pay for the coach that he wanted. I'm I'm going to take my grandson to the spring game because he loves the fighting Irish. I've beat it into his head since he was two. Yep. He loves the Irish. I love the Irish. My nephew Josh, all of them love the Irish. It, it's insane that they would be this way, man. Yeah, it's it's it. very disappointing. Why don't you spend the money to put a product on the field? The problem is everybody's blue collar workers to go there and spend all the money, and the old blood's still in there that gives the money to the university. And you was talking about maybe Captain Jack stepping down and getting some new young blood in there. They're not going to put a young guy in there if it's the old blood money. They're going to keep an older cat that's going to listen to what they want. Yeah, it, man, it's just so frustrating. I just want to feel like, for as much as we all care, that the people that could actually impact this care just as much. And I just don't feel that that, oh. ma- that lines up right now. And And that is very, very hard because we could love Notre Dame all we want. If the, the people in charge don't put us in the right position, it isn't going to matter. And that really makes me feel upset. The only good that's going to come out of this is Freeman gets them kids in a meeting away from everybody and says, look, it's us against the world. Let's go do this. Yeah. And then they go handle their business because we have the running backs. We have the wide receivers. We've got good tight ends. We lost the... NFL great tight end. He's going to play for years if he don't get hurt. My thing is, we have the team to do it. We have cornerbacks now that can cover. We have good defense. We've got all these top-notch linebackers coming in. We're getting ready to wreak havoc. We just need them to back our coach. That's what's so frustrating. It makes Marcus Freeman look like an idiot. And he don't deserve that, man. Yep. He's trying. Marcus Freeman is trying so hard. Like, he is doing everything I always begged a Notre Dame head coach to do. And the way to approach it and mentally and the effort and the recruiting message, modernized but still maintaining our, val- our core values, all of that stuff Marcus is giving is all. If I'm him, I'm furious. And it would oh, honestly, pra- it would, to, it would honestly. Split. It would impact my working relationship with the AD moving forward. That's how big of an insult I would personally take this. My relationship with Swarbrick, if this is the dynamic I'm speaking of today and there's not a lot more behind the scenes that I'm not privy to, this is something I'd have a hard time wanting to go to dinner with Jack and have a beer with from now on. I'd say, dude, you're screwing me. You brought here saying you were going to give me what I needed and help me. Here you go, and you're not doing it. All the brick walls that Notre Dame faces with recruiting as far as getting the kids in there with the right grade point average and all that, all the the handcuffs that a coach has to go through. And then the only brick wall that he hits is his own university. That's what, oh, my God. Yep. Yep. I fumed all night at work. I was losing my mind thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, I no, you bring home. up. I'm on my ninth beer. You bring up. I'm on my. 
<laughs> I'm on my ninth beer. Let's <laughs> good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Beer number nine. I love it. But dude, you're totally right though. Notre Dame already has enough natural challenges to get to elite because of the way we're built. We don't need the one of the other bigger ones to be internal. It's already hard enough. Uh-oh. Oh, man, he dropped off. It was nice talking to him. He drank nine beers. He's opening number 10. All right, you guys, that's going to be it. Um, I, I'm, I think we've covered this sufficiently for today. Uh, I do want to let you guys know, I'm going on vacation next week. I'm going to Florida. So I don't know how the timing of all this is going to be when I'm in Florida. I'm bringing my laptop and my uh, camera. I don't think I could bring my microphone and all that and travel with that. I, I, if I need to, I'll fire my laptop up in Florida and it won't have the the studio and everything. But if a name breaks, they hire somebody and I got to cover in Florida, I'm going to try. So it may not be as quick or as easy uh, as this show, but just because I'm gone doesn't mean Notre Dame stops. I'll do what I can to get you guys information. That's not going to be till this weekend. I think we might go live Thursday again. Friday, I got to get ready for the trip. Uh, but Thursday, we might go live again, see where we're at, see if I've calmed down and see where what we think. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for donating. Days like this are why we have this show. It is for you guys to sound off about how Notre Dame makes feel. Okay? Hobe Sound, Florida, is where my uh, brother lives and my parents has a place. Uh, if you know where that's at. Hobe Sound, Florida. Um, so thanks, everybody, for that. But days like this are why I started this show. Was for us all just to talk. Good stuff, bad stuff. This is it. All right, I think we'll be back Thursday. So we'll have one more of these and then we'll do the news as we need to do the news, the news from then on. Thanks, everybody. Don't let this ruin your Valentine's Day. Be nice to your significant other for at least an hour. See ya.